In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we'll be adding a deletion functionality to our Django app. We'll learn so many cool things along the way, including how to allow a user to delete a list they've created from the database and how to dynamically update the page to reflect the change that happened. And in order to make sure that nobody deletes anything by accident, we'll add a delete confirmation dialog. I believe that Django, HTMX, and Bootstrap are a dream team. And I feel like this tutorial might make you feel the same way as I do. Seeing is believing. So let's start coding and learning. Totally use this video as a standalone video and learn many cool things. However, it is part of a Django HTMX and Bootstrap learning series. So if you want to code along, you'll find the link to the GitHub repo with the code from where we left off. You can clone it and code along. Either way, let me show you where we left off. Obviously we've created a Django project. Let me give you a quick tour of it. So right now it has the landing page and we have the movie detail page and you can browse movies and search for movies. And the idea is when you find a movie you want to save for later, you can add it to one of your movie lists that you can create. So what we've done so far is we have created an authentication system so that users can create accounts, log in and create lists. So we've created a create list view and a profile view. On our actual website, the profile view is called users hub. And that's where we're listing the movie lists. For user lists, we have created a partial template. That's where the delete button is. And we have the list creation form in its own partial template. Is there anything else I should tell you? Oh yeah, we've added Bootstrap and HTMX to our project via CDN there in base.html. So like we said, today's objective is to get these delete buttons to work. So we'll start out by going to views.py in our users app and creating a delete list view. So def delete list. And since this is a function based view, we need to pass request. And of course, we're going to need to know which list we want to delete. So let's add list ID as a param. And to make sure that only logged in users can delete their own lists, let's add the login required decorator. We could also add it to our create list view. We haven't added it earlier, but it wouldn't hurt. Okay, now we wanna get a hold of the list we want to delete. So let's set variable user list to get object or 404, which calls get on a given model manager and raises a 404 error instead of the models does not accept, exist exception. Let's import it. I'm gonna copy the import statement from the docs. Let's paste it. Okay, now let's set user list to get object or 404. We're gonna need to pass the model, which is user list. And now let's set ID to list ID and user to request dot user. Okay, so with this, we'll be able to get a hold of the list that's going to be passed in. When we click the button and a post request will be made. Well, right now we actually have not added any logic that would trigger a post request when the button is pressed. So let's go back to our user lists.html and let's wrap our button in a form element. Let's give our button type submit and we will be using HTMX here because we would like to make it so that when we delete a list, the user's lists would get updated dynamically. So to do this, we'll be using 
HTMX's swap strategy. So let's use HX post to make a post request and let's set it to URL delete list. So that's the name we will be giving the path that we are going to link to our delete list view. When a post request is made and things go as planned, we said that we want to update the user's list. We'll be using HTMX swap for that. So let's set HX swap to inner HTML because we would like to swap the inner HTML of the user lists container, which is the div that has the user lists.html partial, which we will be returning through our view. So let's set hx target to hash user lists container. And since this is a post request, since this form is making a post request, let's make sure we include csrf token. Okay, now let's go back to views.py and check if request method is post. If it is, then we want to delete the user list and we want to return render the user lists.html partial. So I'm going to copy this return statement and paste it. And of course we need to have the updated user lists. So I will copy this line as well, where we get the user lists belonging to a user and paste it. Okay. And now let's set uh, user here to request the user. Okay, so let's say request is not post request, then we want to return HTTP response forbidden. Okay, so let's import it from Django.http.response import HTTP response forbidden. Okay. Now let's go to urls.py and map to our delete list view. So let's import it and let's create path with the endpoint delete list. And we're going to need to pass the list ID, which is an integer. So int list ID. Now let's pass the view and give our path the name delete list. Okay, now let's go back to our browser and see if this works. So let's refresh. Oh no, an error. I think I know why. So um, we are passing the list ID through the URL, but when we added our form in userlists.html, we wrote hx post URL delete list, and we didn't pass the list ID. So let's just do that. So list.id. Okay, I think this should fix it. Okay, let's refresh. Yeah, it did. But our UI is a bit mixed, messed up now. Let's give our list the class deflex and see if that makes it better. Okay, let's refresh. A little better, I guess. Okay, let's see if it works. So I'm going to delete love stories. Let's click on this button. Oh, it's gone. It worked. Okay, but it worked too well. 
Like I feel like I could easily delete lists without meaning to. So maybe it would be better to have a delete confirmation dialogue, right? Like, are you sure you want to delete this kind of thing? Okay, I feel like uh, bootstrap modals would be a really good candidate for this. As usual, I'll just go to bootstrap website for some ideas and code to copy to save time. We can take this example code for the modal. I'm just going to copy this entire code block and then we're going to edit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory to keep our modals in inside the user's directory that is inside our templates directory. So yeah, let's call it models. And inside it, let's create a new file for our model. So I'll call it list delete confirmation dot html. Okay, now I'm gonna just paste the code. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to make it so that when our user clicks on the delete button, they see the confirmation model appear. And then once they click that they're sure or whatever, then uh, the post request would be made to our delete view with the list ID. So how about we go back to user lists and we copy the form, the whole form, and we just paste it inside where it says is the modal body and give our modal an ID, like for example, delete list modal. Okay, I'm going to copy the ID because we're going to need it in a second in order to make our modal appear. Okay, now let's go to user lists.html where we have the delete button. Right now it lives in a form and we have copied the exact same form and put it in our list delete confirmation modal. Here it is. So let's delete everything related to our to the form inside user lists and only keep the button the delete button we're going to use bootstrap attributes in order uh, to make the modal show to trigger the modal so i'll copy those two the data bs toggle and data bs target and i'm gonna paste them in our button. I'll set the BS target to delete list model. Okay, now we're gonna need to include our list delete confirmation model. I'm going to put it here within our loop where we loop through the list. So include users slash list, uh, sorry, users slash modals slash confirmation dot html okay now let's go back to our website and refresh all right i'm going to try to delete movie night right now so i'll click on the x oh here's our modal okay of course we need to edit it so for example we could say are you sure you want to delete list.name and then let's put this in let's say an h5 element ah okay actually let's make this the model title so class modal title okay okay i think it's fine for now and then let's make this button say yes 
delete it and let's give this button uh, the class button danger and let's add another button have it say no oh, I changed my mind for example let's check it out let's refresh Actually, it doesn't look as silly as I expected. It's kind of nice. Okay, so we're gonna want this button to dismiss the modal when we click it. So let's give it the attribute data bootstrap dismiss modal. Okay, so I've just noticed that when we click on a movie, uh, the modal asks us if we want to delete the first movie in the list, which is not good. Okay, I think I know how to fix that. So it seems that since we have given our model the ID delete list model, we create only one model for all the lists. Now to make sure that each list gets its own unique delete list model, we can give the model a unique ID. We can do this by dynamically passing list ID to the model's ID. That way each model would have a unique ID that matches the list ID. Okay, so now let's copy what we've just added and go back to user lists to our button that triggers our modal and let's add the list ID part. Okay, now let's go back to our browser and refresh and see if that fixes it. So I'm gonna click on movie night. Oh, it's asking me if I want to delete the correct list this time. That's great. Okay, let's check if the no, I changed my mind button works because we haven't. Yay, it works too. Cool, good job. So I'm not a big fan of the backdrop that appears here. I would prefer if our model had a shadow. So to remove it, we can go to our models containing div and we can add data BS backdrop and we can set it to false. And now since we would also probably want the shadow instead, let's add the shadow here. Okay, let's refresh and see how that looks. Okay, oh yeah, it worked. That's cool, I like it. Okay, now let's see if it actually works, right? <laughs> so let's click on yes, delete it. Yay, it's gone. That's cool, let's delete sad movies. Let's click yes, delete. Yay, it's gone, it works. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we can add a movie list and then we can delete it again. And before we delete, we get a confirmation dialog. So we don't delete things by accident. Awesome, so I vote we end the video here. If you found it useful or you learned something new, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video where we'll add more functionalities such as allowing our users to add movies to their lists. Bye. <laughs>